Hi people, welcome to Blue UK Jazz Dance with Birth Look Cool Volume 1 dedicated 110% to my legacy, yeah? Now, excuse me, just eating a banana. <laughs> now, what I want to say is simply one of the key things that people need to know about me was I came into this world with undiagnosed dyslexia. I was one of the most clumsiest child in the world. But I came up into a cool family. My dad was very sporting and my mum was very sporting. Yeah? And they couldn't understand why they had a really clumsy child. Both of them worked hard with me. I was the most uncoordinated, clumsy child you could ever want to see. My mum thought I was misbehaving. She couldn't believe I was so clumsy. I'd be breaking things all the time. It took me ages to learn to tie my shoelaces that type of thing but anyway because I had a great parents awesome parents I would call them cool parents who did a lot of cool things my mum was involved in a lot of great things in the home so with her dad I used to watch them and from a young age what happens was living in the slums one of the most important things is sport is seen as important for your cool aesthetics and I just came determined that I was going to be good at sports. So I used to spend a lot of time in the back garden and outside in the front, practicing constantly all the time. Yeah, constantly all the time, people. Particularly, um, particularly in the back garden. Me and my brother spent so many hours in the back garden practicing. And always individualize your mom and then in the front. And what was good them days was remember I had I got a brother who was older than me and he's got older peers where I lived in Moss Side at the time was it was a whole street you know what I'm saying and all the houses were attached you know what I'm saying and everybody was playing sports and it was a battleground you had to learn to toughen yourself up the way we played sports we played sports in a very competitive way but what was good we saw sports being played on the television so you picked up mature attitudes so we didn't realize we were learning from visual learning and oral learning because you remember you had commentators and your parents were involved in sports like cricket was a huge one for us within the black community boxing huge in the black community you know what I'm saying athletics huge in the black community World Cup huge in the black community do you get what I'm saying right okay and everybody wanted to be like Pele everybody wanted to be like Carly, you get what I'm saying? Now, as I said, I was a very uncoordinated child, but I was a very timid, insular child. But the good thing I had about my insular being insular, I used to do positive things during the time I was being insular. I had antisocial behavior because I was very extremely shy. Um, and like I said, that was all part to do with undiagnosed dyslexia, disadvantages, the symptoms I was having and triggers was disorientate me. I couldn't understand why. Yeah, you know I'm saying. So it's important for people to have understanding. When you see me dancing, you realize I was a child who was not naturally gifted at sports nor dance. And the first individual who started to teach, talking about this stereotype, because a lot of Anglo Saxons Asians and all that come to me and say you're such a natural dancer. No, I'm not a natural dancer They say you're such a natural sportsman when I ate I showed that I was a project. No, I'm not a natural sportsman What happened to me? Because of my timidity because I was very timid shy Bum bum and because my undiagnosed special education needs when I went to school six to eight I was extremely bullied at school and I was tortured people from six to eight and I got sent to the Caribbean that is where my body awareness changed, amazingly changed in the Caribbean. My parents sent me there to go to school. My mum took us there, me and my brother and sister, and we went to school there. Do you know what I'm saying? We played sports there. We did dancing there. We went to church there. We looked through the community and saw black people in different positions. I changed there. Because and toughen up because in the Caribbean they play football with bare feet, and I'm telling you, they're tough. 
and they play with a hard plastic ball so when I was playing football with them I was playing with bare feet wow in the first week my feet were killing me but that's the way they played it so I had to play it with bare feet you know what I'm saying my grandmother sent me out there with bare feet to play with the bare feet people you need to understand playing football but she sent me out there to toughen myself up and I did and what happened was I didn't know that when I'd come back to Britain after learning some martial arts out there a guy taught me some martial arts he told me how to condition my body he said your body has to be tough to absorb punches or when people hit you he was very much a person to martial arts and self-defense who tried to taught me the art of fight without fighting he said one your parents want you to do well at school and you have to represent them at the school so it's important that you try not to get in no fights you don't you don't go out brawling but at the same time you've got to be able to stop yourself from being hurt now my grandmother was the instigator of this because he used to live across the road he's very poor and he used to make his food and all that and he took me to bamboo grove a beautiful guy very optimistic yeah right? and, and it was important for my parents to show me the caribbean why because we lived in the slums and we thought we were nobodies because we lived in the slums but my parents took me to the caribbean they don't believe because they live in the slums and nobody they just believe that's their condition they've been placed in and that's what my parents talked talked to me about and this guy was one of the greatest teachers i've ever had and i looked at him as like a bomb in britain when a person lives in the slum people look at you as a bomb this person was a bomb he was in poverty he was very poor but very very proud and very disciplined in his life in his cooking in his training and he taught me that and he taught me to condition my body yeah when i came back from the from from the caribbean sports started to happen in my school and guess what i stood out as a sportsman who was exceptionally gifted who was exceptionally awesome was very mature at the game so i played football i played not only as an eight-year-old for my team as a best player but for all the teams above they had to have me play for them that's right all the teams above they had to have me play because i was the most outstanding footballer i was the most outstanding cricket player and was the most outstanding athlete the most outstanding rounders player that you ever did see yeah my mobility with ball sports had been well nurtured by my father he wanted me to learn cricket he taught me to coach cricket my mom developed my athletic ability but they did it secretly in the way that they did you didn't know at the time i had an older brother i used to play with him all the time three years older tussle with him boom 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 go out into the streets play cricket in the slums again tussle with the players and that gave me a positive psychological and physical toughness to play sports what happened to me i was emotionally weak emotionally emotionally weak i had social emotional problems because i was very shy very extremely shy i was very timid i was very ashamed of my education ability i could see that people could work out things that i couldn't i couldn't even tie my shoelace to go to school my parents had to i said come on it's about time you learn to tie a shoe i couldn't work it out i tried and tried so one of the things that i tried and tried and tried and tried that trying that persistence is what made me a great sportsman and a great dancer people have you got that and that's one of my legacies because what happened if you knew how i was as clumsy as i was you would never believe how clumsy i was you would never believe how uncoordinated one you wouldn't, wouldn't believe how i was timid in my body so i had to change everything and from eight years old i changed it so i'm going to show some people pictures of me and a fiver side side team at my school which is important for people to see because that ability with within sports that persistence to self-learn to and basically it's called professionalism my professionalism me planning and organizing my training me developing my own learning ways of training and development which were very very alternative and unique and distinctive to me fast tracked the way i learned and what happened was that sports prowess was the reason i could engage in uk jazz dance as a 10 year old as a pioneer with the older guys you get what i'm saying from the beginning i was a top dancer because my mom and dad were top dancers and i come from a family of top dancers 
So when 1975, when the first jazz funk came, was in my home I created it with other dancers. Yeah, I was as good as my brothers were. And I had my brother that was five years older and a brother was ten years older. I didn't ask to ask them how I developed dance. I just developed dance like the Nicholas brothers. And we used to compete against each other. And we used to collaborate with each other. Do you know what I'm saying? We the John o brothers. Most importantly, you need to understand, always from the beginning, my dad taught me, mum taught me to learn your own style. And that we knew that was part of our culture and all the free da freestyle dancing in the black community. It wasn't about you copying anybody else. We had dances that we did collectively. But the dances was about developing your own style and personality. I had that already from a sportsman. Do you get what I'm saying? It was about developing your own skills, your own learning. You did that selflessly, right? And I did that within the home. I practiced extensively in that, my house because my parents worked nights. When they went to work at night, I played football in my passage. I played cricket in my home. I used to juggle the ball. You know what I'm saying? In the summer when they used to go out, I used to go in the backyard and practice cricket or kick a ball against the wall. Where I lived, I could do that. Do you get what I'm saying? I played table tennis in my house. I was the table tennis captain of my school. Yeah? We won amazing awards through me. Do you know what I'm saying? That all happened through my brother. That's another story I'll talk about. Anyway, Blue UK Jazz talking about my legacy. My legacy. The conditioning from eight years old enabled me to engage in one of the most Olympian art forms ever. Basically, that is like Thai boxing, which was UK jazz dance. The first one, jazz funk, soul jazz, jazz fusion. Do you know what I'm saying? Latin jazz. Do you know what I'm saying? Onto bebop, into jazz house, into hip hop, jungle, garage, boom. All these dance, you need physical fitness. And I'm talking jungle dancing, proper jungle dancing that African diaspora people did without drugs. I'm not talking about drug in, um, because I dance without drugs. Jungle garage, these were all night events. D why I danced these type of dances because they were the same as UK jazz dance. That's where UK jazz dance went for me to jungle, went to garage. Do you get know what I'm saying? Because there were dances where you were asked to free your full self in them pushing the boundaries of who you are you get what i'm saying uk jazz dance came with that it was experimental it was social it was freestyle it's important that's what distinguishes it from like hip-hop hip-hop is freestyling but what happened with uk jazz dance it has that free form element which is part of hip-hop but it's not the focal point for it where uk jazz dance a focal point for it is you have to show free form yeah, you know I'm saying in dance competition, in the development when we first started, it was all about competition, but free forming, particularly from 1978. It was about being experimental. Yeah, you know I'm saying and listening to experimental music. So that's the difference. So I'll give you an understanding of freestyle hip hop. Hip hop can have the music, it is experimental, but not as experimental as jazz. We were dancing to jazz music, experimental jazz music, and the whole idea is use the dancer was to reflect. The music that you were hearing, draw from the learning and thinking and development, reading the back of albums, listening to what the jazz musicians were doing, and then we were dancing as musicians. That's how we were dancing, and it's important. It's the records where you get the understanding of why the free form came. It was because jazz fusion came. That changed everything overnight because jazz fusion was connected to art and music. And when you study art and music, you study complementary arts. So I studied comment complementary arts, experimental drama, experimental dance, experimental art. Do you know what I'm saying? Experimental music. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I did as part of my evolution. Boom, boom. Most importantly, I studied alternate experimental development of the body. That's one of the key things that I took from... UK jazz dance, but I took it from martial arts, Jeet Kwon Do in the 70s. I took it through contemporary dance. Because contemporary dance was interested in healthy development of a dancer. It's different from ballet. People need to understand. When I started to do ballet and jazz, you're surprised how many people drink and smoke. Loads of people do. I thought people did it for keep fit. No, they don't. Hundreds of ballet dancers smoke and drink and take drugs. So you need to be clear on that. And jazz dancers, I said. 
but in contemporary contemporary dance reflected what my parents reflected reflected Rastafari reflected Ito Ito was a movement within Rastafari where you ate good food you into arts and crafts and boom contemporary dance linked to that that's why I went to contemporary everything to do with contemporary has always been about the experiment improving one's mind spirit and body in the context of like a Shaolin monk have you got me right so I'm the first individual to give you these type of insights no one's giving you because they haven't done the research I'm heavily based in martial arts I study martial arts inside out I study the movies I study the books I have an extensive range of books and I did martial arts for a little while the two key things I do now are boxing and Thai boxing yeah I mean boxing is part of our culture because it was we had spiritual wrestling spiritual martial arts capoeira Angola we had spiritual boxing stick fighting so part of my development as a person was first in the Caribbean I learned to use a bamboo stick that's a way to maintain my health and well-being yeah you know I'm saying to condition myself and it did it conditioned me in so many different ways I'm not going to talk about that now but it's giving insight using a cane also to use the cane yeah people need to know you have to do certain exercises right in the way that I use it yeah you know I mean and you're gonna see some of that anyway blue UK jazz I'm just giving you insight into my legacy my legacy is real talk my legacy is real rethinking my legacy I have consciously spent many many hours learning to bring a deep appreciation understanding of UK jazz dance and it's important for me to say this for people to understand and grasp another culture's dance you have to put away preconceived ideas about it what's happened has people have brought their preconceived ideas about UK jazz dance and that's been led by many of the DJs Many of the Anglo-Saxon DJs, 99% of them spread negatives about us and the proprietors and onlookers. This was huge back in 1975 when the National Front was abound. A lot of cultural bias. It's been spread by people who have implicit bias because they've been educated by cultural simulation education in Britain. Do you understand? So let me repeat again. To grasp another culture's dance, you have to put away preconceived ideas about it. Do you understand? And I know that people don't don't do that so I'm the first one to challenge that yeah you know I'm saying I identify I've studied on some great teachers of dance music drama who enabled me to reach me reach new heights and they help me to reach new heights as a learner and a thinker I'm an independent thinker yeah you know I'm saying in UK jazz dance as an arts administrator I'm now qualified I have a HNC in arts administration management and business management I had many years of hands-on training within cultural groups working for individuals from 1984 you might as well say that's what started but I was an independent promoter from day one in 1980 and that crossed a wide range of roles yeah I'm saying my dance role was basically I was running a company with my brother from 1980 to 1986 and it started with fundraising through young Christian workers we did a dance hall event which incorporated talent competitions I mean talent showcasing of dance music etc comedy we put on food we put on drink yeah you know I'm saying and we use sound system and we brought in a new music policy a wider music policy for the first time we brought in the soul funk disco jazz funk eventually house calypso never been done before because what we did refused our grassroots parents style of doing events with our new school type of events which is dance on yeah never had been done before and that transformed the whole history of Manchester yeah I'm saying so what happened was when you did dance hall events you always had blues so we changed the whole blues policy in what we did how we went about things we changed parties we changed christenings we changed weddings. We seen dance hall in the northwest because me and my brother did events in the northwest of England in the dance halls, exactly the same in what we did in Manchester. Never seen before. Bringing a new thing, and we did. We had a jazz funk group. 
that was in there which is body function that's how it first started and body function was the first underground avant-garde jazz funk group we were we bought ballet shoes there are two female dancers there's many groups with girl dancers so i'm going to give what's important for me to make that say this we one of the groups had female dancers and they fought in an avant-garde way they were top dancers of the street styles of the club styles the disco styles as well as they were at stage school and we they are the ones that to influence about stage as many other people yeah you know i'm saying because i started to do ballet i started ballet in 80 as well as doing african caribbean yeah you know i'm saying contemporary because of these girls tap because of them the girl dances we have because i saw what they could do with it yeah i'm saying i knew that wow learning a wide range of dance styles providing a choice and i want to be a choreographer that way to have want to draw on different things because every person in our group were all interested in musicals especially the girls they they love musicals just like me i loved musicals and i wanted to be in a musical yeah i'm saying so i started to study jazz started to do mat matox jazz dance style boom 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 anyway i'm gonna leave it there because i just want to give people an insight into blue uk jazz dance part of my legacy Blue, you catch your take it easy.